Hello everyone, we are here at the Bold Daring Woman Summit and today I'm interviewing Carla Van Walsam. And who is Carla? Carla Van Walsam is a PhD trained in the Netherlands as a psychologist, holistic therapist and a family constellation, constellations facilitator. Owns the thriving holistic practice Heart-Based Solutions for over 20 years, Carla has been an internationally recognized speaker, author, and teacher in the areas of women empowerment, relationship, emotional healing, mindset, and transgenerational trauma. She has helped many clients create quantum progress through her unique combination of psychological, spiritual, and metaphysical approaches. Carla's extensive study of European, American, and Eastern proven healing modalities provide the foundation for her work. Welcome, Carla. Thank you so much, Z. It's always funny to hear my own bio in this way because yes. I'm so excited about the modalities that I combine. So like, okay. mm -hmm. And you are uh, such an um, uh, extensive and uh, wealth of knowledge and experience in different cultures. So let's start with that. You grew up in Netherlands and then at some point in your life, uh, you decided to move to America. So yeah. tell me about your upbringing. Did you have, uh, what brought you to become psychologist? And did you have any role models in your family that were entrepreneurs? Interesting. No, um, to the last question, I did not really see entrepreneurs. It was more, I came from a family that music and art and literature and and science that was like great um coming back to my childhood why i became <clears throat> interested in psychology is that because the holocaust played a part in my family and that made me very aware of the world needed to become a better place mm -hmm. like so many people think right and i want to do something like that and i grew up with um my sister and brothers too but my I was the second child and my sister was the first one who was severely autistic, didn't speak. So that really determined a lot in my childhood. I was always together with her and I learned a lot of compassion when she passed a couple of years ago from cancer and we never could speak, but we were very connected. I thanked her for the opportunity to learn the compassion so much as a child. The rest of my childhood wasn't such a big, great thing. I mean, there was a lot of trauma and misery in my family. But mm -hmm. I turned that like in a way around to, yeah, yeah to, to heal that while you didn't call it healing then yet, right? It's a bit mm -hmm. more a word today. Mm -hmm. But I was like, you know, I want to study psychology, actually psychiatry. But if I see blood or somebody in pain or bleeding, then already, I'm already nauseous. So I would be a very mm -hmm. bad doctor, medical doctor at least. My father was against me becoming psychologist because he said, you're too sensitive. So, mm -hmm. okay. And then in Holland, you could not study if your um, parents had a certain level of income, then you could study, of course, but if they didn't pay for your study, you would not get support. So I became a classical flutist. So, and I thought, okay, music is great too, because I had a talent and I thought you can lift up people with music, mm -hmm. but you don't heal them, but you lift them mm -hmm. up temporarily. So I got bored with that, even though I had a great career and I love music, of course. And then I was 27, I started to study psychology in my own terms and paid for it myself, of course. So, yeah. And then I found psychology kind of limited because it's so symptom oriented, finding a symptom and then working with the symptom. And I felt something is missing because I truly believe that like the trauma was the most intriguing part for me. Um, also because growing up as the beginning of the question, I saw how the war and the losses, not, a, not only for Jews, but also for people in so many ways has so much impacted them emotionally. And um, so I thought I was looking for hypnosis at a certain point and the hypnotherapy. And then I discovered family constellation work and I was like, yeah, really? <laughs> and then I went to a workshop and I was so blown away. And then I became later on, I started to study the work. and. It's amazing what you can do with that because it is a way to find trauma, eventually heal. Only, you know, with neuroscience now you can see, can, you can learn that or it proves that when you look at a problem 
in a way in a different way visually it already ch shifts something in the brain so mm -hmm. that's one way of looking at but this method is able to find detect because it's kind of energy work in your system your own traumas and what needs to be healed if and also what you carry from several generations <clears throat> and often we don't know so it is in a way every negative thing that happens as especially the very negative things the very extremely negative things they have an impact and if they're not healed or acknowledged or something done with it integrated they tend to reverberate through generations and impact us physically also emotionally physically it becomes our dna so it's so interesting work yeah yes a long answer to a short question yes i call this the transgenerational curse that you need to break yes so you at some point you got married and you moved to united states and from an immigrant perspective myself uh, that's a very uh, emotionally charged decision and uh, adapting the children, adapting the family lifestyle, you being the person you are, entrepreneur, self-made. How did you manage the um, emotions, the resilience, and then being with your family as well? That's a great question. I had three young kids, seven, nine, and 12, and a husband. And he already had uh, his business, part of his business in Florida. He had a second home there. So that made it a little bit easier. Mm -hmm. And what you say is so true. The emotional disconnect. I had a great life in the Netherlands with amazing friends. Friendships has always been, have been always very important to me. And my work was also very easy because when I graduated, I, I, I didn't never had to do marketing. Well, then I came to America. First of all, my degrees weren't really accepted. So that was one thing. And I was also very uh, oriented on, I wanted first my kids to move through this transition as well as possible emotionally. And we did this as a family and everybody was okay with it and enthusiastic. And then when I started to start my own business and I speak about 2004 when we came, <clears throat> 18 years ago already, almost. Then I had to learn marketing because the world was changing due to the internet. Well, I knew what a computer was, but not so much more, you know? Mm -hmm. So that was really, I learned so much. So what I also learned in the meantime, we went through difficulties that we were pretty well off and lost it almost all like in 2008, nine and 10 and all that. We divorced at that cer a certain point. And I learned so much about how to, your way of thinking makes it happen you know like if you speak about entrepreneurship that people say you just need to go you move you need to continue you need to go but you need also to reflect you can fight against the wall and the wall tells you no you need to go other direction so i became more spiritually i was already open to a lot of things i had been clairvoyant as a kid so that helps but i became much more um looking at other ways like um, because I had to build my own business and I, I, I love that, but it also brings it like, it's you. And then being Dutch and you, you hear my accents and in Holland, you learn certain languages. I speak six languages. And the handicap of that is that you have an accent or you make some mistakes. And a lot of people don't have patience for that. And Dutch people in general think that they're great in English, but if you speak for a longer time, you speak for public or you speak, yeah then you make mistakes or it is writing, you know, it is impossible um, to do that perfect because I, you're not a native speaker, right? Mm -hmm. So all my work also had to be edited and there are people, specifically the people that don't speak another language, don't have much patience. So then, yeah, that, that, was, that, is, that was hard. And that was really hard to, to speak and then to realize that people are not so interested like I was used in the Netherlands, you know, if I, exp I had no problem expressing myself ever, but in, in English, it suddenly became a little yeah. harder. Yes, you had to build trust with um, your patients, your audience, and then go from there. Um, so then tell me about your experience of being divorced immigrant woman mother okay <laughs> and yeah because that's few positions and you are managing your resilience and your 
career and building your confidence? Did you feel any shame or what this setback, did you take this as a setback or how did you feel at the moment? I felt terrible because there was a moment, like I said in my previous uh, answer, that we lost almost everything financially mm -hmm. and then to be divorced and to have three kids in two different private schools. And um, everything was like collapsing so badly. And my husband and I had a totally different approach how to deal with that. And I was very much focused on, you know, uh, creation, moving. And, and so mm -hmm. that didn't work well together. So then I was by myself and my husband did not want to sell the house. It was a humongous house. And that was like such a point that needed to be sold. So he, he was not there. He, he hold on to a dream. And I knew that this doesn't make sense at all for different reasons. And um, so I was in so much fear that I didn't sleep. And I started to work with affirmations. I started to uh, learn all kinds of, I started to listen to Abraham Hicks. I started to, I did that already, but I was like, telling myself the whole day, like money is flowing to my bank account. I am manifesting. I was like crazy doing all these kinds of things. And don't forget in the Netherlands, I was as a musician, as, as a therapist, I was not really an entrepreneur because I was always hired or I had just my clients. It didn't feel as an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. So that's kind of different. Now I had to build it all by myself, all by myself, no money, three kids that were teenagers already. Now, I'm also a trainer in non communication and that I call it connecting communication. And I have always had a great relationship with my three kids, although one had severe ADHD, so that gave more complications, but that was my challenge to make it as great as possible. So all this together was so much on my plate. Going back to the Netherlands was no option because my kids didn't want. So what was I going to do, right? I even didn't have money for tickets to go back. It was just that crazy. And it was just like, not sleeping and that was it was so difficult that I, if i think back at that like that time now it's just the power of mindset and really you have to move on and i was thinking of people that had a different more difficult life than i have right people that were in camps or in prison or that lost everything and you know i was thinking what's their power what's their power how did they do it what were they thinking mm -hmm. to get out of this so I was like, do, do, do. and yes, you mentioned the word shame. There are really moments that in the beginning, you know, when I, we couldn't pay the bills for the school anymore and I was going to pick my kids up and I was, I was always used to pay everything and rather, you know, give more than less. Right. And I was, so I learned to receive in that time too. Mm -hmm. And I remember I was walking in the school. And like with my eyes on the floor, because like everybody knows that I cannot pay my bills here. And it's all these things brings it up in yourself, but you can heal it too. So be, in order to think differently, you know, and, and to, so I found ways. I started to give courses for, for free indeed in the school to, to make things going on, that they could continue to stay there. So I found solutions and there was a lot of adversity that was on my path and I don't want to bring it all up. But it is really the, the focus, like believing in it and, and, and also meditating, connecting to what I felt, if that really felt good or not in order before I made a decision. And because of my sister, the upbringing with my sister, right? I tended to give more and, and with her, there was a one way relationship because autism, in a sense, my sister had it. There was no emotions towards me. It was only me giving to her and her never giving anything. She ruined mm -hmm. my dolls. I mean, there was always something. This different one and a half year. So that has been resolved also in me. Like, it's okay. I learned to receive and I learned to receive, not to feel like a mouse, like of shame, but like, thank you so very much. And then had to give back right away, but to really go there. And I, and the interesting thing is I learned so much of all this, you know, like, like the giving and receiving thing. Uh, a lot of women, men too, in different ways, but a lot of women are raised, it's great to give, right? If you give your doll, your favorite toy to a kid as a little girl, then they say, oh, it's so great that you give that, amazing, you're fantastic. But if they say, oh, it's so fantastic that you received that, uh, that doll, that you received that gift, nobody will ever give you any positive feeling around it. 
So because of I had that so clearly in myself, I saw that this in so many people a problem too, you know, because we want to give, but we feel uncomfortable receiving and that a big part of my work is the relationship work and family relationship, but also personal work, of course, and the receiving part, if you are not having a good mindset about receiving, you will never be successful as an entrepreneur. Mm -hmm. And um, how do you overcome self-doubt? Challenge the thought. There is a technique of, of Byron Katie that you ask, is this really true? And then you start to ask more questions. Challenging the thought, the self-doubt, where is it coming from? And I have been, so I have been going through a very critical upbringing and I know very much how the critical way of thinking can destroy so much of your steps and so much of your, your life if you don't, everything in a way, if you don't, don't catch that. So the self-doubt can be one way, a thought like, hmm, I need to look at this, then it could be better. Something is maybe telling me it's not where it needs to be. Mm -hmm. you, know, it's, you see, I don't use the words right or wrong. It's like mm -hmm. where it needs to be, you have to get it in a way that you feel more aligned with it. Mm -hmm. Or the self-doubt is coming from a critical voice that I heard too many times and that that is speaking. So you need always to challenge that. And I like that you say that because I have quite some clients where that plays um, a part in that they don't realize that it's their thinking, the self-doubt, the self-sabotage that they create with their way, with, with what their whole thinking um, pattern is. And what's your position on women building their confidence? Yeah, that's a great area too. But my position is in that. Um, of course, I encourage that wholeheartedly and f everybody needs to have that confidence. And I, I first, if I work with people that need that and work with women that want to create more, it's always first healing what is in their system. There is this very interesting thing, right? And your system is your subconscious, your way of thinking consciously, but subconsciously too. There is this interesting uh, thing that um, an average person of 16 years old um, heard 180,000 times that he or she is not good enough. And that is based on three times a day. Now yeah. imagine what they say to you in school, what the other kids say, what teachers say, what parents say, grandparents say. It exceeds much more three times a day. It's terrible. So that's part of your, 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 your self-love blueprint gets so big, such big holes because of all that. So self-doubt, self-sabotage, it's so related to what's in your system. Now, you cannot, you cannot take it out. You cannot cut it, but you can develop a different, with work. You always need to be ready to do the inner work. There is no hocus pocus pill, it would be great. It's not there. It's the inner work you do. And then you need to face that and overcome. Mm -hmm. And how do you embrace your unique feminine qualities? Um, yeah, <laughs> I do. I'm happy to be me. I work hard also, but I'm, I think by nature, a happy person that helps, but I also, um, and in, through the difficulties I worked through, right? What I just said before, I started to focus very much on love, you know, like love is the answer. It's a great book by the way, but really that love energy and to, and to, to, and to, and the love energy is for the feminine, but it's for the masculine. It doesn't matter. It's for people in general, you know, it's, it's, it is a way of looking at life instead of what's wrong with the other person, you know, it's like the loving way. So that if you say embrace femininity, yeah, <clears throat> it's, it's like being okay with who you are and enjoying it and you don't have a choice. I mean, that's what you are, right? Yes. So much, uh, yeah. So uh, you are an accomplished author and I want to talk about your book, Thank God I. What inspired you to write this book? That's interesting. It is a compilation of several authors and I was one of them. Mm -hmm. It is the product of John Castagnini. Um, it, it was inspired by the Chicken Soup of the Soul series and he yes. wanted to find and I, that's what I really like. That's why I signed up for it or when I took the invitation 
the it's like adversity turning around into something positive mm -hmm. and, and that and and about my own book it's on the way takes a little while still and that is mainly about respect and in, in so many areas and how you can create that and it's a compilation of uh from every topic with a problem how to get to the situation um that it's not a problem anymore also with the communication so coming back to embrace your femininity it's respecting yourself respecting others as well and the same thing with adversity you know it's overcoming the feelings of being a victim in mm -hmm. order to become a victor because you cannot be both simultaneously and we all have situations in our lives that there are barely there are any people to be found that are not so um that that went that didn't go through any difficulty so you can always you use the word resilient you can get out creating resilient or you stay as a victim and you go with that pattern mm -hmm. all right so the thing called i series is um and nice that you bring that up it's really a nice approach you have titles there like thank god i got raped or thank god my mother died i mean you know but that's the title for the series for the, the story what it gave you of course yes. you're not happy to be raped of course you're not happy that your mom died but there can be coming such growth out of it yes i um remember a few days ago i listened to a um, small message of tony robbins that he's thanking his mom who for who she was because if she was not the person the abusive woman that she was he would not be the person who is he yeah. and impacting so many lives and that's everywhere in your life and my last question to you, um, Carla, is what does it mean to be unapologetic you? Oops. <laughs> <laughs> That's an interesting question. To just be me and accept that, but also taking responsibility for if I don't do something or if I might hurt somebody, then I always take responsibility for that. And, and, and to be just myself and as authentic as I can be, but also... I also want to be kind and in, in an authentic way, of course, are speaking my truth in a way that I will be heard and not hurting, right? Mm -hmm. And that's something with the communication I learned pretty well, what to do, but yeah. And yeah, just, and that's a beautiful thing. I didn't think about this question at all before to be unapologetically you. That's such a great gift if you can give that to others. And thank exactly. you for telling this to me. That makes me think for today. Yes. Thank you so much for this interview, Carla. Hey, I'm Carla van Welsen, founder of Heart Based Solutions, where I help you with psychology, neuroscience, and holistic modalities transform your life, career, and relationships. If you're new here, make sure you click the subscribe button and hit the bell to get notified for new videos. Any link that I mentioned in this video, you can find in the description box below. 